Um, yeah, the next uh, 50 minutes, me and my colleague will uh, be looking, uh, taking a closer look at uh, like what is really going on uh, in the world with Trojans, what kind of Trojans are we seeing nowadays, how do they work, and also see how they differ from what, what actually most people think they are seeing in the world, for, uh, what uh, people think uh, the real threat is. So the first part will be, some, uh, will be more about uh, some more statistics, what we are actually seeing. And then in the, uh, in the second part, my colleague Dirk uh, will take a deeper technical look into it, um, how a couple of those things actually work. Um, uh, have, we have a, a short demo from actually connecting to a real uh, command and control server uh, to just show what kind of functionality those uh, nets, networks really have. So to start with a little uh, overview of the history, Tro uh, the problem of, uh, with Trojans is probably nearly as old as uh, we, uh, we are using computers. Uh, the term was first coined back in 19 1983. Uh, at least that's the first reference I've seen uh, when that one was uh, used uh, to uh, Trojanize the login so that actually the login pay, uh, your login credentials would uh, be logged so that uh, the attacker could log into that, into that later. Historically, Trojans have been uh, used to either get privileged access uh, to machines, uh, like keyloggers, uh, key fake login screens, etc. And then a different kind of Trojans uh, is then used to actually maintain access on, uh, onto the machine, um, either by hiding some of the files, hiding the presence of the attacker, um, uh, the rootkit functionality, which is something fairly new on the Windows world. On Unix, we know root rootkits like forever. And um, then backdoors uh, that may be installed to actually reconnect to the machine at a later stage. Um, so to make sure that you again have, these, um, have those kind of access. And the hype around Trojans really started uh, were here at DEF CON. If, uh, if anyone was you here, if any one of you was here at uh, DEF CON 7, uh, do you maybe remember the, uh, the announcements uh, and the show from the Cult of Dead Cow team uh, who uh, released uh, back Orifice 2000 here. And that's pretty much the first time there ever uh, really was a, a big noise in the press and worldwide about Trojans being a major problem. Those Trojans then basically were fairly simple um, remote access Trojans. Uh, where people would actually have to connect to the machine from the outside. So in general, inside a corporate network, you were pretty safe from attackers uh, to the outside. And well, then the hype around that was uh, really started. And currently, th there are like two major uh, hype uh, Trojans. Uh, the first one, uh, Magic Lantern, which is supposed to be developed by the FBI. It may be perfectly possible that they uh, have uh, written something like that, they developed something like that, or bought something like that, but that is very unlikely to like be a major threat to any one of us, except if he's like committing some really bad crimes. And now we have like a Magic Lantern version 2.0 in Germany. Um, uh, at the end of last year, the uh, German authorities uh, requested that they should be allowed to like break into machines and do online searches on suspects. And they have uh, actually uh, budgeted or at least estimated the cost of the development for such a Trojan to be around about uh, 200,000 euros, which I think is quite excessive for like any kind of Trojan. Um, there are some sites on the internet where you get good working, good working Trojans for much, much less. Um, we'll see something about that. Um, if, uh, if you look uh, with Google for the word Bundestrojana, you will see around about 600,000 hits. And considering that at least as of today, nothing said, uh, like that actually exists, uh, that's quite a lot of hype. And uh, every now and then, someone picks up on the story. Then the Chaos Computer Club in Germany made things a little bit worse by saying that they have uh, detected uh, like the Bundestrojaner inside an application that pretty much everyone needs to do his taxes. And that's when chaos in Germany around, uh, around this really broke out. So what is the reality looking like now after we've seen like, uh, what, is like, uh, what is not real? Uh, we do see a dramatic increase um, of uh, uh, the various type of Trojans um, and also uh, the functionality of the uh, Trojans um, 
has now differed. Like traditionally, most Trojans used to be like um, used to be like vector Trojans, but that um, has also changed quite a lot. If you're looking here at these submissions uh, that um, uh, that actually are being sent to us, and you look at the um, proportion between actual new viruses being sent to us and actual new Trojans being sent to us, that gives you quite an idea what's going on. The last category of potentially unwanted programs is, well, something that is hard to classify as a Trojan, but most people wouldn't like that, like, for instance, dialers and um, similar things. So here we have the statistics for 2005 and 2006 of what kind of programs uh, were really sent to us. And uh, on the, the side of Trojans, there was like a nearly 50% increase um, in um, regarding the percentage of what uh, part Trojans uh, really are. The other area with a major increase uh, was the area of bots. Um, all areas have gone back uh, quite, a, uh, quite a bit. We still, good, uh, we still do get things like microvirus and other things, but those are like not really relevant uh, in the world today. So that, then if we compare the various Trojans we are actually seeing, um, back to Trojans used to be like pretty much all the Trojans we knew. And uh, there were some password stealing Trojans, mostly like for Unix or Novell logins. Um, but those were never really widely distributed. They were most likely being used like in one single case, uh, directly written by the attacker and then forgotten about. And uh, now we have seen a major increase in password stealing Trojans um, uh, that uh, in many cases uh, just take the information, send it to some site on, uh, in the internet, uh, dumping it in, the, in some directories. Um, we will um, at the end, if there's time left, I can actually show some screenshots on how one of those dump sites uh, is really looking like. Um, the downloaders are something, um, something that we came across fairly new. A downloader is like a special type of Trojans that, Trojan that basically just connects to pre-programmed websites and actually downloads normally various Trojans, some adware, some spyware. And those downloaders are uh, what you no will normally be seeing in your daily email. If someone sends you some file, um, receipt.exe, it, uh, and it's a small file, then normally this is not the Trojan itself, but just some downloader that then goes and uh, downloads uh, the, uh, the real Trojans. Some of those downloaders are like really excessive and downloading like 20 or 50 different applications and trying to install of them all at once. And then you can only hope that your machine survives. Yeah, we, um, we've seen a, a fairly dramatic increase in some of those areas uh, um, from uh, 1997 to 2006. And um, the, the number of uh, password stealers um, is one of the area where we currently see the biggest growth. And uh, I expect this to be, uh, to be continuing over the next years. If you take a, a little a better look at uh, passwords, at the different kind of password stealers, um, then there's uh, something really strange. Like, well, most of the password stealers are actually targeting banks. And yeah, you would think that is fairly obvious. Uh, a bank makes a good target. I mean, people use their computers to online banking. And currently, there is an arms of race, uh, um, a race of arms between people writing uh, password stealing Trojans to attack banking sites, and then from the bank, uh, from the banks to create new security mechanisms that are more difficult uh, for Trojans uh, to capture your credentials. Like some of the latest developments is, if you're trying to log in, uh, you, uh, you will actually re receive an SMS uh, with uh, additional credentials with a, uh, with a transaction number that you then have to put in online uh, to, uh, to make it impossible for someone with a Trojan to, uh, to steal all the credentials that, uh, that you really need. Most banks are not as advanced at, this, at that as this, and especially in the US, many banks still rely on username and password or username and PIN, and once you've got that, you're free to do everything with the money you found. Um, then so we're seeing a lot of various other Trojans, and actually a fair number of Trojans do target online games. 
especially in, uh, in Eastern Europe, China, there are many different uh, Trojans that target specific online games and also credentials for games like World of Warcraft and something like that are also highly sought after. And if you, uh, uh, if you, look a look, if you take a look around, um, people sell World of Warcraft characters. They sell like items from World of Warcraft or gold from World of Warcraft for real money. They used to sell that on eBay uh, where a special good character was worth like 1,000 euro. And so, yes, that is another interesting target for, pe uh, for people. And most people may, uh, be, may be more suspicious if they do some online banking about something running in the background, but just to log into your like World of Warcraft account, uh, most people probably don't uh, uh, think that they could be attacked uh, at that time. So that was, uh, an, um, that was uh, something that uh, really struck me as odd, that people target um, online games in such, uh, in such a big way. Um, yeah, what I'm having here is now some real data that was provided uh, to me from uh, one uh, customer who's running uh, something between 20 and 60,000 node company. Uh, actually, I got several uh, different reports, but they are so difficult to compare um, as so many fa uh, factors um, um, uh, make, um, as there are so many factors uh, where it's dependent on what is actually found. Um, so, well, in the, in the last 18 months uh, de uh, detection, the first, two, the first two detections actually were mass mailer, uh, with one of the, uh, one of the mass mailers uh, being uh, detected eight million and some hundred thousand times. Uh, then, well, the next mass mailer, then there is one adware, uh, a mass mailer again, and then we're already seeing generic malware.a.zip. Uh, that is actually a generic uh, detection for us uh, for new Trojans. And while well, Trojans do not replicate by themselves, so if uh, you have a company between 20 and 60,000 machines and you do detect uh, some Trojan in total 200 and something thousand, uh, thousand times, uh, that may give you a little bit of an idea of uh, how big the current uh, problem with Trojans really is. Um, then the next detection, new malware J, is a uh, Trojan as well, is actually a newer detection. And uh, then, uh, interestingly, en interesting enough, there's an, uh, uh, a real virus, a, r a virus that uh, is a parasitic virus that infects other files, and, uh, and has, well, got some stealth functionality, uh, uses some rootkit functionality, and it actually also has got a downloaded uh, capability, so that virus will also try to connect to the internet and download additional files onto your machine. So that was kind of interesting to see, again, uh, real parasitic viruses spreading through networks. I haven't seen that for quite some time. And, well, then there are some other, uh, some other Trojans uh, and some viruses to follow later. And uh, then if, uh, you, uh, from the same detection uh, list, I've checked only the time uh, from beginning of 2007 to, to, uh, to uh, I think, to three weeks ago. And, well, now the picture suddenly looks something, somewhat different. Mass mailers? No. There is no mass mailer in the top 10 right now uh, in that company, and actually not even worldwide. So now the top detections, the first one was new malware J, uh, which amounted to, uh, for uh, nearly half of the entire detections uh, of things they had. New malware J is, as I said, also a heuristic driver to detect uh, new t uh, Trojans that so far were unknown to us. Then there is uh, that virus that, that I mentioned, and then after that, in place number four is a Trojan, and on place number five and place number, uh, place number six uh, are actually downloaders, and those, downloader pretty, those two downloaders pretty much straightforward. Go and download and install uh, some new Trojan package onto your machine. So this uh, gives a, a fairly good indication how the picture has changed um, over the last uh, couple of months. Yeah, then some questions that come into mind. So where are all those bots that everyone is talking about? Well, for one thing, this was uh, something that, well, it was real detection inside the corporate networks, and bots do have a hard time to get into there. But, well, some actually do. 
And uh, in, the, in the total list of things detected, there were like four dozen different uh, bots, SD bots, GAO bots, SPY bots, and some other things. Uh, but most of them only a, a very small number of times, like most of them not even 20 times, compared to the 200,000 times that actually some Trojans were detected. One of the main reasons for that is uh, it doesn't make sense for people to write a worm or a bot that spreads totally uncontrolled uh, all over the place. People will notice and they will take countermeasures. People figured out they can profit more if, it, uh, if something new just spreads for a limited time and then stops spreading and just makes the uh, machine available for them. And then there were also some fun detections. Um, in the log, there were actually some old-style boot DOS boot sector viruses that were still detected in 2007. Um, then some utility, um, which actually is uh, detected as a potentially unwanted program, um, uh, PS Kill. And I asked the guy, they are not using it internally. So I wonder what uh, 1,000 people inside the company actually want to do with such a utility. And what uh, what? Uh, <laughs> Then what the, what the most strange thing was uh, detection, 544 detections actually of Zimbo as com warrior. I have no idea how that got to into their logs. I mean, it's, a, it's something that infects mobile phones and shouldn't be, on, um, shouldn't be on normal computers. So I wonder if there was some idiot that, that tried to download it and the virus scanner took it away and he tried to download it again or something like that. That could be that uh, if laptops have Bluetooth turned on, yeah, that would at least be one explanation. Otherwise, that left me like completely startled. <laughs> okay, thanks for that. Yeah, and well, uh, the, the trends at the moment um, are fairly obvious. We're still seeing a major increase um, in viruses and trojans and expect uh, this one to continue for quite some time. And uh, then also to, like 85 of, uh, um, of all the emails that actually hit corporate networks are currently considered a spam. And uh, if, if you look at the amount of email that is then real spam, that is, I mean, spam where actually someone tries to sell you some drugs or longer penis and whatever they try to sell you, um, and uh, emails generated by Trojans, uh, generated uh, to incite people to download uh, malware, depending on the region where you were, uh, in the world where you are, uh, it's actually something with, uh, like 50-50. So quite a lot of, uh, of, the, uh, of the amount of email worldwide at the moment is being created uh, just to distribute Trojans to other people. One of the main reasons behind that is uh, that we have seen uh, malware, uh, money as the driving factor to, de uh, to develop uh, malware and also to run malware. Um, when you own a botnet, there is a number of ways that you could, where you can really make a lot of money. And so most people are talking about renting those botnets out to spammers or renting them out to run distributed denial of service attacks. Yes, you can make money with that, uh, but not really much. It's a couple of thousand dollars we're talking, about, uh, we're talking in this case. Um, those people that really do money with that is they are using their botnet, the machines they are controlling, to go to their own website, downloading and installing adware. They are getting, depending on uh, where that machine is uh, located, something between five cent and 50 cent per installation. And well, if you've got a 100,000 100, machine botnet where you install, say, five different pieces of adware on all of the machines, yes, that's some serious money. That could be a couple of hundred thousand uh, dollars. So that is uh, where people also try to control those machines for as long time as possible, uh, use whatever means possible to uh, have not a, uh, neither a user nor antivirus software or some other security mechanisms detect that something is wrong with that machine. Uh, just so that they can uh, make money out of your machine for a longer time. Um, here's a short overview over the current price of a couple of items available on certain sites. Um, so uh, as you can see, credit cards at the moment are fairly cheap. 
uh, because there are so many, uh, well, so many password stealing Trojans, so many key logging Trojans that actually steal those data, that there are enough credit cards out for everyone. Um, they are being sold in like a bulk of thousand credit cards for four thousand dollars, and that is with the uh, with that super secure three-digit verification code on the backside. Um, because, well, if the Trojans on your machine, you log uh, into your whatever account, buy something, and then you're asked to type that number in, yes, of course, that Trojan is capturing that information. I don't even know why people still stick to that as a security feature. And, uh, well, some uh, governments apparently have very big budgets of 200,000 euros to develop, uh, and, uh, develop Trojans. Uh, some other people um, uh, offer Trojans uh, for much, much less. Uh, if, if someone wants to become a criminal and use a Trojan to control some people's machines, steal his data and sell his banking account information or something else, and he's too dumb to uh, program, uh, then he can just go and uh, buy a completely fully featured Trojan package. Um, this is probably a little bit difficult to read, but that is like the basic spider package uh, that you can buy for 650 US dollars. And so that uh, already contains uh, various uh, ways to, uh, to leak data around firewalls, an FTP server, key logger, an implementation of WebMonkey, Keeper leak, um, various uh, direct attacks against a couple of uh, banking sites. And uh, this Trojan is like one year old. The current Trojans offer even more cheaper, but I didn't really want to give uh, you the information of a website where you can download them. You need, to, uh, you need Google for that and at least 10 seconds. If you need more than a minute, then you need some Google training. Uh, there are so many sites uh, that, offer, uh, uh, that offer similar malware for download to, an, uh, to anyone. And then there is, uh, well, currently a fairly new trend uh, of uh, how to get malware into, uh, into people machines. Typically, people used to like send you an email with maybe an interesting attachment, maybe an interesting text message, with some attachment where they would ask you to like double click on that attachment and uh, then something would install. Um, then the next step was the attachment was much smaller, but they still ask you to double click on that and uh, that's then a downloader that goes to some place and downloads the real Trojan package. And now people figured out, well, most of those emails, they don't get through, they're being blocked. Uh, in many companies, uh, email is like checked for viruses, then it's checked again for spam, and then there may be additional checks for fish, phishings, etc. And if someone just uses a web browser and go there, there is nearly no, no check done in most companies nowadays. So what people are doing now is they just send you an email like with some link where you then have to click on the link or they tell you you have to like co take that link and copy and paste it into your web browser for security reasons and uh, then they take you to some website. So while well, surfing to websites at the, mo at the first glance mm, sounds not really that dangerous. Um, but uh, we, we have seen a lot of also ODAs uh, being used on those websites to then actually attack people browsing there automatically. And there are also a couple of automated packages that are currently being heavily used, um, where with such a package, MPEG is uh, currently probably the most misused one. Um, where an attacker just uh, has, to need, um, has to insert an iframe link into some website he hacked into it or he uh, had another way to put that iframe into and, and that iframe points to the server where the MPEG part is really, uh, is really running on. Um, the MPEG toolkit uh, will then check what kind of browser is connecting, what operating system, um, uh, what versions, and then it will choose uh, an exploit that is likely to succeed. So if, uh, uh, if they see, oh, he's running QuickTime, then you're being served a QuickTime exploit. And um, if that is successful, uh, then you ac uh, actually again a downloader will be, uh, will be installed, it will download again, and the game starts from there. 
Um, we, we have seen a, a massive uh, uh, attacks using MPEG over the last couple of months, and there are also now some other PECs that work in similar fashions, IcePEG and some others. So also in the, in the scene of cybercrime, people oh, basically are copying each other ideas. Yeah, and, um, some of the uh, some of the banking trojans we are seeing are taking a, gr uh, a big offer, a big effort uh, to uh, make themselves well invisible on the system and grabbing the information um, uh, th uh, that you enter to a banking site. Most of them are actually installing themselves uh, as a browser helper object. And that also means for such a Trojan, all the time it has got all the access to the information that you're sending with the web browser. So even if you have a secure SSL connection to your banking website and you think, you're, well, I'm secure, nothing can happen here, um, the Trojan itself still has complete access to all the information and will grab them and will send them out. Some Trojans then go so far as to actually in, uh, intercept the first time you try to do uh, something with your bank services and uh, only the second time is successful. And normally those Trojans are also doing a screenshot of the entire p uh, site that the user is currently seeing and then also screenshots of, uh, every, of the area around every single time you use a mouse click. Um, to make it more easy for them to get uh, behind some of the, uh, some other new security schemes. So then, um, what uh, what's the, then? Uh, um, how do then people may actually succeed in uh, making Trojans well difficulty difficult or not uh, detectable by antivirus software? Well, there's a lot of money involved, so people do spend the time to create their Trojans and modify their Trojans in such a way that the current version of a pure um, um, signature-based antivirus scanner simply doesn't detect it. To do that has become very easy for an, for an attacker to do. Uh, for one thing, all the current uh, virus scanners with all the latest signatures are available, well, more or less free to, do uh, free to download. So it's easy for the attacker to have all the current versions of uh, the various antivirus scanners, and then he just need to change the Trojan so it's not detected. Well, that actually does take quite a lot of skill, but as most people aren't skilled, um, well, there is another way to do that. Uh, there are various uh, runtime packers that are just there to make something look different so that it's not detected uh, by the current version of a virus scanner. There are various packages, um, uh, um, there, there are various packages uh, that you can download uh, that whose only purpose is to, be, to make something very difficult to debug and very difficult for a virus scanner to actually look under. And we've seen cases where several different packages, uh, packages have been applied after each other. Um, I think as far as, as, far as, uh, as many as eight different packers that have been used to, um, to hide something. Well, and at this time I actually hand over to Dirk, who will now go into more technical details about all this. Yes, thank you, Torolf. Yeah, all the packers are giving me a hard time, so I'm, I'm one of the researchers uh, from McAfee working on the customer escalations and creating signatures for our AV products. Uh, the problem with all this, all these uh, packers is uh, that those you can apply several packers quite f uh, c uh, quite fast to a file, to your sample, to your Trojan, and you don't have to recompile, change the source code, or do any modifications to it. So it's quite easy for them to produce new uh, new malware within seconds. A few samples. Uh, this one is download AAP, which is quite popular in Germany. Toraf has been talking about the Bundestrojaner. So this one was, was one of the emails was sent out uh, pretending to be sent from the police and uh, attached was, uh, was a uh, zip file, inside the zip file an executable which was the downloader AAP. Once the user uh, clicked on it, first the files got downloaded, another uh, files yeah, for spying the user, uh, stealing passwords information and other stuff from the local machine. Actually, after the um, double click, the Trojan just downloads a small text file. This text file contains uh, encrypted URLs, as you can see on the, on the first part. 
It's simply XORT with two. So once you decode them, you can see on the blue screen, uh, on blue screen the real download URLs. These files is in, in this case downloader B, uh, uh, downloader is by HMBA, excuse me, which uh, just a dropper for a file uh, IP, uh, IPv6 mom DLL. And this is a browser helper object focusing on for, on, Q, uh, on uh, user credentials for German uh, financial institutes. Finally, this Trojan just uh, sends out an email back to the attacker where the information which got stolen uh, are listed. So in this case, for each victim, the uh, attacker gets one email report, and it's not that easy to parse for him. <coughs> so another example of the me-spam Trojan. Uh, this hooks on the windsock, and whenever the user uh, sends out an email or uses instant messaging like AOL, Yahoo, or ICQ, are, it adds a link to the message of the user. So, for example, if you're chatting with one of your friends and uh, you receive a link from him that you're uh, from within his message, you're likely to click on him uh, on, on the link because you trust him. So this is one of the uh, nasty ways this uh, Trojan infects other people. <coughs> Excuse me. This Trojan has a quite nice uh, statistic uh, uh, command and control page where you can see statistics on uh, which way of propagation is uh, successful. Uh, split it up on uh, spam, on spam. You're okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, email, ICQ, it even uh, can uh, add links to your content that you add to web forums. So you just post whatever you like to do, and if you go just go back afterwards to the page and have a look again, then you will see that another link got added to the to the post you just did. Um, additionally, you can see here some information of where the victims are. In this case, many of them are in Germany. Um, on this web page can easily be configured which files should be downloaded by the Trojan. So uh, it's quite easy for an attacker to uh, coordinate his files to uh, publish new versions. They get updated so the Trojan downloads another version, deletes the old one. Another way to escape detection of AV products. And even nice statistics are served by the command and control page. So so you get an overview of how successful your attack was. So in this case, uh, on this page, you can even see uh, what kind of message should get appended, so, um, either appended or prepended. Uh, in this case, it's only a URL. Um, you can also add some other text messages. You can specify text messages for each uh, country. So if, uh, if it's in German, Germany, you'll probably like to have a German text, if it's in, Engl uh, in, in the United States, put, take an English text, or wherever else. So it can be configured for each country separately. This was a nice, uh, nice analysis, analysis from uh, Francois Pagé and, and Elodie Grangin. Uh, this was a Trojan, a password stealing Trojan, um, more the old fashioned way where all the stolen data gets uh, posted to an FTP server. Each computer has a unique file name, uh, a unique folder name within its uh, own country. So when the user gets infected, um, the further files get downloaded, several different. The um, GOIP site is used to de determine where the victim is. So um, the reports get sorted on the FTP server in the, separate, uh, in, in the recording folders. In this case, you can see here if the folder of France, and there are quite a few victims, uh, three, about 400 in this case. Um, in France, during, uh, when this Trojan came out, it was about the time when uh, they had to do the tax income online. And uh, so the stolen data were quite... Uh, uh, Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it shouldn't be on on the server public available or available for the bad guys. So we tried our best to work together with, with the um, federal um, federal departments in France to get the server down and to protect the victims. This is an overview where the victims are. So it's spread all over Europe. 
uh, not only in France, so it's not targeted on a specific country. Uh, we use the IP addresses to, to uh, draw the plots uh, on, the, on the map. But it's not only in Europe, it's also in North America and even in Asia Pacific, so all around the world. And this Trojan wasn't, or the password stealer wasn't up for a long time, I think probably two, two weeks. So this was a snapshot after two weeks. And yeah, quite a few people around the world. Another story well, that I'm, I've been working on uh, recently was uh, the new war skeleton postcards. I guess you've all seen those emails. This one just uh, arrived uh, on the, uh, yesterday in my email box. Uh, it's a standard spam text, and if you click on the link, uh, no, you don't get uh, you don't get to a postcard. You get to a Trojan, and so I had a look uh, at the Trojan in my code network, and uh, this Trojan connects other cli uh, other uh, other bots on the net. So they're using a peer-to-peer -peer protocol, which may look like the eDonkey protocol, but actually it's not uh, a complete implementation of the e. Donkey protocol, maybe likewise. Um, I noticed some interesting uh, UDP packets coming in. As you can see at the bottom, this one is now looking for a file called 24942.mpg with a file size of around 70k. Well, 70k for a movie file. Mm, now I think that the content is something different. And it's not only looking for, for, for that number on that file size, so there are different. Uh, different packages, ca uh, packages coming in. Uh, these are usually search requests where they're looking for, uh, for further information so that the botnet is updating itself. Uh, I'm still working on that, so I don't uh, have, a f uh, f uh, have a, f a full, full overview about the protocol and how it's working. But you can also see other packets like this one. Uh, this one can contains some more data. Uh, the size of this is more than uh, 234 bytes in a UDP packet. Several other packages are uh, exchanged, and uh, I assume that's the way how the bots uh, get controlled and how, how they receive their commands. Those are able to send out emails, spam emails. Uh, they can also do a denial of service attacks. So while doing this, uh, suddenly I noticed in my honeypot that there are coming quite a few emails in, and I wasn't, uh, wasn't expecting them. So I had a closer look at them, and, okay, you can't read anything, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so these, uh, we, we saw in the last days uh, many, uh, a high volume of spam of, uh, file, of emails containing a zip, arch uh, zip archive attached. And if you open the zip archive inside, you find a raw archive. So only the file name, the attached file name, was named zip. Inside was actually a raw archive. Once you unpack that uh, archive, you get to a simple pump and dump spam uh, message saying you should buy some stocks. Another look in the hex editor shows you uh, there's a big amount of character line feeds to disguise uh, or to to, uh, to to disguise the to separate the spam message from some uh, bogus text at the bottom. And there are two different types which just uh, got generated in my GOAT network within, I think, about two or three minutes. And uh, so a few of them had a, were about 80K per file, the zip attachments. Others were rather short. In this case, same thing, another raw archive in a file named something.zip and inside the same spam message and the same line breaks to disguise to the, uh, to, to, uh, to separate from the bogus text at the bottom. <coughs> so I'm still working on, uh, on researching the protocol and uh, learning more about it, but we're learning more about uh, this Trojans and uh, maybe I'm able soon to, yeah, to monitor the, uh, the the spam tasks or even the denial of service task to uh, take countermeasures in time and to alert other people. So that's what I'm currently working on. If someone has some experiences with this Trojan or with the protocol that it's used, uh, please contact me after the presentation. And uh, now I'd like to give back to Torolf. Thank you. 
Yeah, for the, uh, for the various uh, types of uh, attack we've seen, um, well, actually, it's uh, uh, getting back uh, on that new bar. Um, uh, that outbreak, uh, as Dirk mentioned, it happened basically just yesterday. Uh, the uh, new bar, um, those viruses, well, those Trojans are using like some kind of peer to peer net to updating themselves. But we've also seen like the latest, uh, the latest uh, spam wave that at least hit Europe fairly hard, uh, being initiated by that web, uh, by that, uh, by by those Trojans. So if you've got an email like uh, with an empty as empty subject, empty message body, and then some attachment that is supposed to be a SIP, but uh, if you just have WinSIP installed and not WinRAR, it will just throw an error, uh, then this is actually something that you have you in, your, in your very inbox, uh, where someone uh, infected with such a Trojan uh, actually then sent you that email. Uh, well, for a short wrap-up for the different uh, types of attacks that we, have, uh, that we are seeing to get users to, um, well, to get machines infected, uh, there, are two very different, there are two very different techniques. One thing is like brute force with like as much high-tech as possible. Um, brute force where people browse the web page, the browser get exploited or something else get, uh, is getting exploited on the machine, something installs and takes control. Uh, we have seen a couple of targeted attacks, um, where uh, in cases well, related to corporate espionage, um, uh, handcrafted uh, documents with uh, old day exploits uh, inside um, office applications have been used to send to people to directly um, install a Trojan on their machine. And very often uh, those attacks are combined with well, a very high social engineering factor, creating, uh, for example, an email uh, that looks as convincing as possible. So you have been added by your friend to this and that email list. Please confirm. Um, there is that very, very great website I found, or simply offering you like free porn, free downloads, um, the stuff that everyone normally likes. And uh, we have recently uh, seen that there is also a trend to go into the, uh, into the other direction. Um, well, there is no exploit at all involved, where there is just like uh, uh, one example is um, an interesting looking email with like some generic text, and then you've got a document with more information in it. When you open the document, yeah, it opens fine. There's no macro, there is no macro code, there is nothing wrong with that document. And then somewhere inside the document is the, uh, click here on this icon to, uh, to learn more about that. And so, well, if you click on that icon, then uh, it is a uh, simple, normal mm, Trojan uh, or downloader that is uh, just embedded inside that Word document. So this actually goes past a couple of technical uh, defenses that people have put inside, inside their networks. Um, now it's things like intrusion prevention systems have become, have become common. People are suspicious when someone sends them a document by email and uh, that uh, document then triggers the email warning. So the attackers simply avoid all those technical mechanisms by writing something as low-tech as possible and just uh, leaving everything else for the user. And actually this is fairly successful at the moment as, ev uh, as right now everyone is looking for something that like tries to exploit his machine, attack his machine, or attack him directly. Another thing that we, uh, that we have seen lately is like uh, you you receive either the link to or directly as an attachment some kind of media file, and many people still think media files. Yeah, that's kind of harmless. Um, the JPEG exploit like two years ago changed that a little bit, but most people still think yeah, video that's okay. I can double click on that or they play, try to play safe and save it on disk and load it from there. And uh, then they get an error message like there is some codec missing to display this file, so they better uh, go and uh, search for that codec and install that. And then actually the codec is the uh, Trojan that then takes control over the machine. That's another attack that we've seen uh, used quite a lot uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, last couple of years, last couple of months really. Then for some other technology that uh, we were expecting to see much more, um, rootkit functionality in Trojans. 
Um, well, there is a rising number of uh, rootkits for the Windows 32-bit world, and there are quite uh, quite some systems that are actually affected by uh, by some Trojans. Um, but we have not seen Trojans uh, uh, being uh, we have not seen rootkits uh, being used so far uh, so much as we uh, as we have expected it. Most Trojans nowadays still don't have a real rootkit component, but the number that has, uh, it's, uh, it, is, it is increasing. Um, it is, has now become becoming at least fairly common that a Trojan also installs some rootkit um, to, uh, to defend itself, to, be, uh, to protect, to make detection and removal more difficult. And then actually both detecting and removing of that Trojan really requires two steps. The first one is to detect the rootkit itself. Normally before you detect that and disable that, there's, well, not really much you can do with the Trojan. So that is then the first step, that, uh, that uh, the rootkit must be disabled and removed. And the second one then would actually be to, um, to remove the very Trojan itself. Um, actually, I'm not quite sure why people really would want to remove a Trojan. Personally, if my machine would be infected by a Trojan that offers like some full remote control power over my computer, I would never trust that computer again and simply reinstall from scratch. Um, but there, there may be two different uh, things that, that should be taken into consideration. For one thing, like the availability of an operating system and everything else uh, to, uh, to recover from that situation. You may be traveling somewhere and uh, you may not have your installation CDs with you. And we have seen an, another uh, thing that affects that. Uh, well, I've talked about that one virus that uses rootkit functionality and also downloads stuff. If that is, has spread to, say, 500 machines in your organization, and you suddenly have 500 computers to set up again, that is quite a lengthy and a quite expensive task. So that may be another instance where you may actually decide, well, detection and removal may be the better way to go, but, well, that's really up to uh, every single case. Uh, one thing that we actually did release last week um, uh, is a free tool to, uh, to actually detect and remove rootkits. Um, at the moment, especially as it's fairly new and uh, rootkit autos, autos didn't have the time to come up with something to, uh, to, to fend that off, the rootkit detective is extremely effective. Um, so that's maybe something yet that you want to try, uh, try out, uh, a download and try out. Um, actually, the author uh, of that uh, one is around here at DEF CON, so if you want to talk to him about that, uh, that can probably be arranged. Yeah, then for the last thing that, uh, uh, that, uh, that we've seen changed uh, and changed a lot uh, is the communication of the Trojans with the various command and control servers. Uh, one year ago, uh, like 99.999% of those command and control communication used to be over the IRC protocol, uh, fairly often over public IRC servers, sometimes over private IRC servers being configured to run at ports 80 or port 22 or port 443, ports very likely to just let the traffic through. Uh, we have seen a shift there that now many of those uh, Trojans are actually uh, using pure HTML and um, also other, uh, well, increasingly other protocols, sometimes encrypted, to deliver the information from the Trojanized machine to the command con and control server and vice versa. Well, all right. So then I've uh, come to the end of uh, this uh, presentation itself. Um, I'll also start a quick demo of uh, one of those control, uh, control and command servers. If there are any questions, uh, we will still be here like two, three minutes, and then we move on to the uh, question and answers room, uh, which is like, I think, directly it's, um, on the other side of that hall. Yeah. 
So this is another command and control page where we just have a small walkthrough. As I mentioned before, um, some Trojans are just sending emails with all the captured data. Others just uploading uh, files to an FTP server and someone has to grab all the files, which is not very convenient. And if you have a large uh, database, uh, it takes some time to download all the stuff and to get the updates. In this case, you have a nice uh, yeah, web front end where you can define different kind of plugins that can be applied to the Trojan. Uh, you can, uh, like this, you see an IE grabber, certificate grabber. So even certificates from your machine get stolen and get uploaded to the page. Uh, it's not only working for Internet Explorer, even plugins for Firefox are available. Uh, this nice overview about countries which are effect, uh, infected by this Trojan. Although they have to work on uh, the statistics, 118%, that's a bit much. Uh, they also offer they also offer uh, SOX proxies. You can choose the country, choose one of the victims. Um, we'll get checked online if they are ready. And then you get the uh, IP address and the port number and can do it for relaying. But more interesting is the search function. So you just enter on the web page what you're looking for, like bank information. Click on do search and then you get a report of the uh, victims uh, and the stolen data. You can click on each of the victims and get separated reports online. You can see which URLs he has been visiting. Uh, for each of the victims, you can specify uh, your own profile, saying uh, which applications or which plugins should be applied. Um, just select one of the links. and So finally, you can even select for, for uh, request information for a uh, big range and then click on the uh, save to disk option and then in this case the all the all the get, uh, all the data will get stored in one file one zip on the uh, FTP server or on the, on the on the server where this command and control page is located so you just need to download a single file which is mm, pretty convenient and same saves you a lot of time so we are yeah. we are running out of time yeah, well, actually, we're finished now. So thanks a lot for your time. I hope we could have something in the future.